thanks for joining us. We're, we're thrilled to be able to offer our second panel discussion. Our first one was last night. We have several more, uh, five or six more at least, through the balance of April, and hopefully you'll be able to tune into those that uh, work for you. But they're called our Valpo at Work Alumni Panel Series. And this evening we're joined by three young alumni who have recently been in your shoes and want to share some advice relative to the job search, the transition from school to work, life after Valpo, maybe some tips on what they might have done differently while they were at Valpo uh, for you all before you graduate. And uh, let me introduce them real quickly just by name and they'll tell you a little bit more about themselves. I'm also gonna introduce in a second, well, I'll do it now, Anna Von Sagern. Anna, Anna's gonna moderate this evening. She's a senior here at Valpo and uh, therefore a fellow student of yours. Uh, Patrick Donahue graduated in 2019. He's been a financial assistant at BCH Wealth Management over in Illinois uh, since shortly after graduation. Uh, Adam Reister graduated in 2013 um, and has had a number of different openings, excuse me, a number, number of different opportunities and jobs since graduation. Um, he's an account manager currently at Applied Systems. I'll tell you more about his path, as will Patrick and their respective employers in Ashland. Uh, graduated in 2018 uh, with a major in communications, and she is in sales with Medline at the moment. And uh, welcome to all three of you. We appreciate it. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, participants, students, feel free to use the chat box to ask questions. Uh, we'll get to them throughout the program. You don't need to wait till the end. Uh, this program is also being recorded, so you'll be able to watch replay on the Career Center YouTube channel. Uh, Anna, why don't you go ahead and uh, take it away? Again, thanks for being here, everyone. We appreciate it. And as I had touched base, touched on earlier, uh, no topics are, are off limits, okay? Thanks, Tom. Thank you. So um, I guess my first question I would ask probably is, um, what advice would you give to give students who are about to begin their first full-time job? And also, how did you prepare for your job? Oh, I'm lit up. Am I, you want me to go first? <laughs> Either way. It lit up on Ladies me. Ladies first. Like, Maybe it means, okay. Um, so I would say one, don't rush the first job opportunity you get offered. I know that um, the first job opportunity, well, it was the second. Um, I took it because I was so scared I wasn't going to find another one or I wasn't going to find the right one. I, I wanted to get into medical sales. I'm in medical sales. And so I finally got my first medical sales offer and I took it. And I ended up backing out on it, which honestly, you know, it kind of looked bad. And luckily, I think they knew I was new to it. And I don't think there was any like harsh feelings. But um, then I ended up finding Medline, which was a way bigger company, way more what I wanted to do. And I just wish that I wouldn't have just rushed into it because I was scared that I wasn't going to, you know, land ultimately like this truly is my dream job. And I know not everyone's lucky enough to like get your dream job right out of school, but my advice is just don't jump into it. If it's just your first or second job offer, if it doesn't feel right. Um, and then my second, I think that was really my main thing actually. So I could, I'd like to echo some of the points that uh, Ashlyn was making there. Um, when I first, I actually uh, interned for my company, BCH Wealth Management in college senior year. Um, and I had a connection. I knew the owner there, but um, before, so I was all ready to go. I was like, all right, I'm going to graduate. I want to go, go and work there. That's just how it's going to be. Um, but um, he, my boss, Brandon, he uh, gave me the advice. He was like, hey, you got to see what else is out there. Even within the same industry, um, jobs can be completely different. Even though you're in the same role, depending on how the companies handle it, it can be completely different. So yeah, just to echo what Ashton was saying, he made me kind of explore the industry, apply to a bunch of different places. He's like, hey, maybe someone will give you an offer that you can't refuse. Maybe there's tons of different things that could happen. So kind of just having that understanding of what you're getting into before you start your job, it'll really help you make kind of the best decision you need um, when you're selecting. All right, I want to go we'll work for them. Everything aligns. So That's great. Um... Don't want to reiterate what's already said because I would add to that as well too. Um, but I, I guess I'll, <clears throat> in addition to that is 
don't feel like it does have to be perfect, right? Like definitely go into what you're going to enjoy and make sure you do your research and things like that. But um, if it's been like a long time or like you aren't necessarily sure exactly what you want to do, be okay with getting a foot in the door of like, this is the industry I want to do, uh, or maybe I want to do some financial planning, but I'm not sure which company yet, right? Like in the sense of Patrick, like be okay with trying something out. Um, now it might not go well, like Ashlyn, right? Like maybe you could have skipped that step. Okay. But that was a great learning moment. And you can now share that with anybody else and you can learn from that on your second job or maybe if you know maybe you get promoted right you can use that for a different position um i uh the way i got my first job out of college i literally was working the career center as a career center ambassador i wasn't at the uh the career fair i was working the career fair and um the group that i was with that uh i initially got hired by is called ethos group i'm pretty sure they're an active recruiter at the career fair so look them up um they were one of two people in suits at the career fair and i said i want to work in a suit right like just like ashlyn i want to get into medical sales i knew i wanted to wear a suit that was my business just mojo coming out and i targeted them and i helped them set up their booth and I said, hey, can I help out, blah, blah, blah. And they said, you know, you should probably go through some interviews. And I'm like, well, I'm just working like in my career center t-shirt. Um, and sure enough, we, we went through some interview processes and I was like, well, I'm not really 100%, uh, you know, maybe excited about doing that specific thing, but um, it aligns with um, like the company culture I was looking for. Uh, the pay was important because I knew I wanted to get married and have kids. So I had to be able to think about what that meant. Is there advancement opportunity, whatever it may be. And all the other boxes were checked, except, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to get into ethos group. Uh, it was originally in the car dealership is where I started. And I was in management. That wasn't really on my radar before then, but I spent five years in that industry doing that. Um, all thanks to taking that leap. And it worked out really, really well. And I'm not doing that now. Um, so don't feel like your first job has to be your last job. Now, if you love it, by mm -hmm. all means, more power to you. So that's all that I would add to um, what's already been said. Okay, great. Kind of going off of that. So how do you figure out, I guess, what pay scale so obviously they're going to ask you like how much you're looking for when you're interviewing for different positions. So how or what is the best way to kind of figure out what the pay scale is or like what's what you should be being paid for that position, if that makes sense? I'll, I'll probably, I'll just go first. I'm sure mine's a little bit different um, than the other two. So I'm actually just a uh, 1099, uh, which what that means when you hear someone say that is that means I'm an independent contractor. So I'm not actually paid a salary um, to do what I do. Most of what I do, um, I collect fees off com fees or commissions. So we help manage people's money. Um, so let's say you wanted to save for retirement and you had $100,000 and you had brought it over to us. I might, we would charge maybe 1%, 1.2%, something like that. And from there, that's kind of what I get. Um, so I, I, I never really went into the job having to negotiate a salary. I always went into a job um, like, okay, it was more of like, a, for lack of a better analogy, I guess, just kind of kill what you eat or eat what you kill, right? So I'd be in there like, you know, if I, if you, if I wanted to sell life insurance policies, then there's a route to make money that way as well. Um, but for me, it was just, yeah, going into a job where I knew that I was going to be secure, I do get paid a base salary just to start, which was something that was unlike other um, independent contracting uh, positions that I was looking at in the financial advisory industry. Um, so I felt with that security, um, I would be able to have my best start. Yeah, and it really depends on what field you're going into, right? You're graduating from Valpo, you're more than likely getting a four-year degree. I mean, don't settle but don't expect to be making, you know, six figures right out of school. It's not going to happen. I'm in medical sales. So uh, it, it's a very lucrative position, but when I started out, I'll be blunt. It was a 45 K base. So I think that's still really great, you know, money right out of school. So again, I mean, 
you have to kind of understand like don't I mean don't settle for less so I don't but I mean don't expect I, I, I probably wouldn't have expected more than 40k with my first job but I mean I quickly work my way up you know what I mean Qu- quickly work hard and make sure that you're mm-hmm. getting what you deserve down the road but I mean keep in mind you are getting a bachelor's degree you are gra- mm-hmm. graduating from Valpa which is a great private you know institution so again don't settle I guess you know like make sure you're looking at all your opportunities but at the same time um yeah don't, I mean don't expect again to get you know a six-figure job you know so that's what I would say Again, just adding to the conversation what's already been said, I'm sure Esalen being in sales, you probably have a similar structure to mine, right? Like I have a base plus commission. Actually, Patrick, yours is probably similar considering you have a base, which is really cool. I confirm that. I looked into that industry and that is very uncommon. So great, good. To your point, Ashlyn, don't settle until you can find something like that because it's out there. Um, in, in the industry, and again, I'm almost at a managerial level where uh, it's it's hard to find good people that have their head on straight and everybody might be looking for a job right now but they want to get paid you know sixty thousand dollars but their education and their experience is only let's say worth maybe 30 or half that right um so know that there you have value that you are bringing to the table and you are worth the dollar that you are worth so you can definitely expect that. Um, But explore all options, right? So my first job out of college, right? Like I had a base as well too. And there was some training period and things like that. But in my second year, uh, it was also very lucrative. So I didn't get to the number goal I wanted to be my first year, but my second year I did. In my third year, I was at 150% of what I wanted to be, right? So know that It might not be your first year, but if you know that there's growth opportunity, whether that be a promotion internally or uh, to Patrick's point, like you eat what you kill. Like if you have that mentality to do more, even if you're not in sales, uh, like let's say you're in product management or you're in um, uh, accounting or whatever it may be, right? Maybe you're in communications. There could be ways to either get promoted internally or you can have an annual review, whatever it may be. know that you don't want to settle, but you need to be realistic with your expectations, I think is fair. And feel free to ask questions about, you know, what does the future look like? So the question was like, how do you figure out what your current base salary might be or what's a fair number? I would add Glassdoor is an amazing resource as well as the, obviously the Career Center. Um, Glassdoor really helped me. Um, And that helps you get some insight into anonymous feedback from folks that are in the industry or were previously. Um, So check them out. Um, But also use your career center resources and say, hey, you know, I'm looking into this industry of uh, medical sales. Do you guys know anybody? Do we have any alumni that I can connect with? Because I sure, you know, Ashlyn's probably going to take your call in a heartbeat. Like, yeah, I'd love to talk to you about that. Let's get some coffee or virtual coffee in Zoom or something like that. So uh, two great resources would be Glassdoor. And then obviously uh, through the Career Center, use your alumni network. Also, just you two both spurned a thought in my head from, from that uh, conversation is um, salary isn't necessarily everything for somebody. So what I mean when I say that Um, I mean that a corporation, a company that you go to work for, they can compensate you in multiple different ways. Meaning you're paid your salary, you get your check, but do they have health benefits? Do they have a life insurance policy that they will also insure you under? There are numerous other things that will add value that down the line you're going to need. And just because one company might have an $80,000 offer doesn't mean that that's actually giving you more value than like a $60,000 offer, if that makes any sense. So, (laughs) Um, and do the math on the times or the hours per week on that, right? Because it might be a bigger sticker value, like, oh, 80 is bigger than 60, but I'm working twice as many hours. That's not really worth it. That's really only worth 40 or 50, right? I was in the car business, retail sales. I was working probably 70 hours a week at some points. And that's why I got out of that industry, but it paid very, very, very well. But when you broke it down hourly, it was kind of just average. So that's a good point. Keep that in mind. That is a really great point. Honestly, I didn't even think about that. Um, 
Okay, next question. So what do you wish that you would have done in college to prepare for your future after school or when starting your career? I'll go first on that one. Um, probably get in touch with someone like Patrick. And I'm not trying to <laughs> do a soft pitch here, but um, like you are gonna be ma making more money, probably you're gonna be making more money than you ever have before. You're gonna have more responsibility than anything before. Um, and you're gonna need to be wise with that. Uh, the earlier on you can get wise with your money and figure out getting out of debt or uh, structuring your financial goals, um, the sooner the better because of compound interest. And I'll let uh, Patrick talk about that offline uh, if you guys wanna connect with him, but um, know that it's not just your first job and then maybe you buy a house or you know whatever your next steps are know that you know you need to be wise and responsible with that as well too um, and the sooner you can lock that down you might not have everything perfect right and it's going to change right when you get married and have kids and all this stuff but the sooner you can have your mind wrapped around that and your goals and start working with someone the better internships are really important i had an internship um, and I was a, still a student athlete at Valpo, but getting an internship every summer is huge because you're coming out of school. Truly, they're going to kind of look at it with no experience. Um, but you're, so your internships really all you have to go off of, you know, like, sorry, like your babysitting jobs and some of that, like to an extent that's going to help you. But like an internship is really going to speak volumes. So getting one every single summer that you can is going to help tremendously. Like I was really fortunate to get my job right out of school with, they looked at it as no experience. They didn't even count my internships, but I think it helped. Well, my company's now made a new rule that no college graduates can work out of, uh, right out of school unless you have two to three years of work experience. I, whether I agree with that or not, I guess that doesn't matter, but you know, you like internships is really one of the ways that you can kind of help get around that I think a little bit so really that's my biggest advice um I'm really glad that I had three years and I just would tell anybody get as many internships three obviously is the most that you can obviously get after each summer but um I would just really say to try and make sure that you're doing that I'll just jump in and let you know that again reach out to the career center and maybe some of your professors too because there's a lot of creative internships that they can help you with where I had probably two or three going on at the same time during the school semester. Um, if anybody's in the College of Business, Professor Wilder has some great connections through her sister. Um, uh, professor Gingrich has a lot of connections as well too. I know there's been, uh, there's new professors in the College of Business, but reach out to your professors um, and they know people and reach out to your career center because they know people as well too. And you might be able to do maybe some like communication stuff or marketing for this company uh, Monday through Wednesday. Um, and the other one you could do a little bit Thursday, Friday, or just work on a project that might only take you two weeks, right? So um, there's creative ways to get some internships. So that's a great, great point, Ashley. Yeah, so um, for me, I would just, towards working towards everything um, that uh, um, Adam was saying was um, just kind of like you guys got to realize that nobody nobody really has it all together right we're, we come home from work sometimes we're all still working towards something we don't ever come home and we're like oh we made it like nobody has ever felt like that okay so at, even when you have those tough days at work um, it's just, you just got to rely on your experiences that you had in school, that you had on your internships, other challenges, obstacles that you guys have faced. Um, that way, you know, we're all, we just keep working towards, you know, your goals, having those things in mind. Um, that's incredibly important. Um, and then secondly, I think is just, just kind of showing, um, your employers, you know, that you're interested in the industry. And what I mean by that is just like having, having experience even outside of an internship. For example, um, I worked in, I work in financial services, right? Um, so I could have had, I could bring together a portfolio. I could do, um, show different examples of, okay, this is why, this is how I look at the market. Here's my opinions. Doing your own independent research into the industry that you're going into 
and just kind of having a focus or an idea of how you want to impact people and help people with whatever you're doing, um, that will be the best guide I think that you could have. I love the, the realistic mentality that you've been talking about. I think that's really great. <laughs> um, so how did you guys' experience at Valpo help you find your first position after graduation? Yeah, I, I love Valpo. It's like my family. I like cannot say enough good about Valpo. And I think um, I also worked at the Career Center and that helped me tremendously because just so I was um, a student athlete, so I was on the softball team, but I was also involved in other things. So I was like the president of PRSSA, which is Public Relations Student Society of America. I was also in a sorority. I worked at the Career Center. I wrote for The Torch. So getting, you know what I mean? Being able to then walk into the interview, because kind of like what I said, you, you're you fresh out of school. So, I mean, you, you, you need a leg to stand on. So the more that you can say that you were involved in, the better. So... Valpo was just amazing because it was a smaller school. I could still play um, my sport, but even if you're not an athlete, that's okay. Get involved in, in as much as you can. Valpo's um, so small, so it's so nice because you know everyone kind of knows everyone. You can really make good connections with your professors. Um, you can get a job on campus and you can get involved in things. So I don't, I mean, you don't need to get involved in everything, but I would really, you know, maybe have a job and maybe, you know, get involved in some groups. Um, Cause really, again, the more that you can say that you did and were involved in and doing that, that's just, it speaks more volumes to your resume and you, you know, as being yourself. So to kind of um, echo Ashlyn's point there again, um, one thing, if, if I had to look back and say, I have a regret of something, it'd be not doing more things in college. Um, and I'm sure these two were involved in a number of different things as well. Um, and I'm sure they would probably tell you the exact same thing, that they wish that they had more time in the day, more opportunities to go and, you know, participate and be around people. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of how Valpo got me ready for my first job, um, just really being able to talk to all of my professors and lean on their experiences was something that um, I've always I've always felt was a strong, strong characteristic that I had. I had no fear going in and talking to teachers and just being like, I literally don't know what I'm like. I don't know anything about this. Can you help me out? Um, and they're more than willing to do that. Um, that's actually, if anything, I'd say that's exactly what they want to hear. They don't want you to go in there. Like I know everything they they've been it. They've worked the jobs. They've been there. Um, just relying on their experience and their connections is um, huge talking to different people in the industries you're interested in. It's just, yeah, it's paramount. So. Um, well, I, I kind of let the cat out of the bag that literally my involvement with the career center working the career fair got me my job. So I, I guess that's a plug for you, Tom, and the rest of the career center. Um, it's literally could get you a job just for working at the career center. Um, but I was involved in same. I, I ran the gambit, right? Like I was in the men's club soccer team. I was part of the Delta Sigma Pi business fraternity. I was also in future business leaders of America. Um, I was part of SIGEP. Um, I was on the safe and empowerment board. I was the president of that. I was involved with uh, college mentors for kids, like <clears throat> find whatever your passions are. And I guarantee you that Velpo has some sort of organization that you can invest in. And even if it's not a lot, like I was invested in a lot of different things because I had a lot of different passions and uh, that was my thing. But like, even if you can't do a lot and you can't necessarily go wide, then go deep so that you can come to the table. Like Ashlyn and both Patrick are saying, like, you might not have a lot of work experience, but you can point to, hey, I was the captain of my men's club soccer team, or whether that be softball or baseball or basketball, or if you're in any sports, or maybe you're not in sports, but you're on the um, uh, uh, engineering team, um, or you're on a communications team, or you're part of an organization, and you can point to that and say, hey, I led this team, or I held this position, or I started this project. Um, or whatever it may be, you can point to those. And yeah, it might not be work experience because you didn't work at a, a medline or an applied, but you were doing work by all means and you were managing projects and you hit deadlines and you can show time management skills and being able to hit an objective, whether that be 
accomplishing that build or uh, uh, winning the championship, whatever you're talking about, you can point to those and you can bring out the skills that an employer is looking for that they can't teach or coach you. They can teach you how to be a really good salesperson, whether you're selling medical sales or I sell software, like they have a sales process and uh, there's probably a way that Patrick meets with his clients and there's a process and uh, that he can follow but the soft skills can't be taught or coached or anything. So they're looking for like, how is your time management skills? Um, how have you developed from a intellectual standpoint? What initiatives have you taken? What risks have you taken? What mistakes did you learn from, right? Like be honest and say, hey, I was part of a DSP and we went to a leadership conference and yeah, I really fell flat on this presentation that I did in front of hundreds of my peers. But guess what? This is what I learned out of it. And next year when I went back or something like that, right? Add to your story. Your story is unique for who you are and whatever it may be, regardless of if you're involved in a lot of different things or just one thing really deep, whatever you do, you can add those to, uh, let's say your internship experience and your job experience and those kinds of things as well too. You're telling a story of why an employer would want to get you, not just some random Velpo grad, right? Um, kind of going off of that, I feel like something that the Career Center has been pushing a lot is tapping into Valpo's alumni network. Of course, you guys are all alumni now and you're here talking to us. So I guess was that something that you guys used when you were getting ready to graduate to kind of tap into and learn more about your positions? And how did that how was that helpful? And how did that go? I used it. I um Again, I wanted to get in medical skills. I knew it right off the bat. And I had, I reached out to a couple of alumni who worked for like Abby or Abbott, um, Cardinal. So some of these bigger names that you may or may not have heard of if you're interested in the medical industry. Um, I didn't really have much luck. I mean, they, they did help me. They were all very, very nice. It didn't ever like lead um, to an interview. I got this one on my own, but um Yes, all the Valpo alumni were amazing. Everybody always responded when I reached out on LinkedIn and gave me really, really great advice. So no, it didn't help me like necessarily like land this job, but I think their advice did help and um, they were always willing. So again, it it's the same thing that when you're applying for jobs, you're going to have to apply to 10, 15 different, you're probably going to have to reach out to 10, 15, 15 different alumni, maybe to get a response sometimes or to get, you know, that information that you need. But most def definitely, it was really nice just hearing their story and their advice. So yes, I would definitely recommend um, reaching out to alumni. And even if they're not really, you know, maybe necessarily in the field you want to go into, they might know somebody who knows somebody, right? So it never hurts. So I would say um, when I was, so when I was at Valpo, um, I actually had um, a speaker in one of my classes um, with John Steele, one of my finance classes, Professor Steele, he was the best, but um, he brought in two guys from Edward Jones and one of them um, was actually a, a Valpo alumni, alumnus as well. Um, so after, of course, um, he went, they went through their uh, presentation kind of about how Edward Jones works, their whole process, what was it like for, um, for them to, you know, train, what was the training like? Um, and just grabbing their ear afterwards and talking to them right away was super important because I later learned I went in and was talking and Professor Steele was like, hey, listen, I've been in finance my whole life, but I haven't actually explored like the personal wealth management side. So he's like, I, I actually can't really help you on that side and give you a ton of great advice. But here, here's a list of other people that, you know, could definitely talk to you about that and be able to help. So just talking like, like everyone, like we've been saying, networking with people. Um, what do they say? What's the, what's the cliche saying? Your, your network is your net worth or something like that. Yeah. Um, so having a good network of people that you can talk to and trust and have open conversations with is probably the most important part. And um, finding those people, identifying those people in your jobs or even in the industries, like Ashlyn was saying, Hey, Professor Steele, what do you know about this industry? Nothing, but here's five people that do. Go talk to them. They're also Valpo alumnus. Perfect. Thank you so much. Then I talk to them. Always willing to help any one of the Valpo alumnus. They're always very, very helpful and will tell you just about anything you need to know. 
so to highlight some facts, Ashlyn mentioned LinkedIn. Like, if you don't have a LinkedIn by now, get one. Career Center will help you set one up or reach out to one of us or use your alumni network to help set up a LinkedIn. Um, I even know some folks that work at LinkedIn if you really want to get into it. So use your alumni network. Um, my network actually helped me get my current job at Applied. Ooh, you see the nice logo here. Um, I was in the car business for five years and I couldn't take the hours anymore. I have, my wife and I have just celebrated six years of marriage. We have three little kids and I couldn't do it. The work-life balance did not exist. And um, I needed a way to get out, but I didn't know what I didn't know and I didn't know how to get out and anything. So I reached out to, through LinkedIn and sure enough, someone that was at a Delta Sigma Pi leadership conference that I attended while in school up in Milwaukee. We went to a leadership conference together and he was working at Applied at the time. And I said, hey, can we get some coffee? This was before COVID. And I said, can we get some coffee? And I just want to pick your brain on Applied as a company, but also your role. And we probably had a 90 minute conversation. And he said, hey, look, I mean, it sounds like you're interested. Do you want me to get you a foot in the door? In the meantime, I had applied online using the normal computer process of applying. And he said, well, I'll put, my, I'll put your name in the hat to my management team and uh, they'll reach out to you within a week. Well, in a week, I scheduled a in-person interview with that direct management team, thanks to my connection through my network that got me the foot in the door. And I had a calendar of invite. I had a meeting actually scheduled with the management team directly in HR. And in the meantime, the computer application that I did gave me the generic, we are going a different direction and you don't actually need to go through this process because we're going to hire someone else. So I thought that was kind of weird. And here I am two and a half years later, I still work at Applied, not thanks to the computer that literally told me, no, you can't work here, but thanks to my network that got me a foot in the door and they said, oh, don't worry about that. We'll take care of that in HR. So I technically was told no. And then here I am two and a half years later, I'm actually working at this job still, thanks to my network. So going back to the statement we made earlier about different organizations and being involved on campus, it might not necessarily help your resume, let's say. We talked about those sides of things, but it sure can get you a foot in the door, maybe down the road. Like maybe you don't have a work experience because of that internship or because of that uh, organization or sports team or something you're involved in. But guess what? When you guys graduate, they might be able to get you into the foot in the door or you don't know where that relationship might take you down the road as well too. Um, and us three, uh, as the alumni, we're trying to help you and just pass the hand down and say, hey, we're ready to help you just like our peers helped us when we were in that position. So highly leverage your network um, as well. Just to, just to kind of, I would just like to cement a point uh, that Adam made there just kind of from the other side. Um, so this isn't from my personal experience, it's from my girlfriends. She, uh, she used to work at Yelp um, and then she left when the COVID pandemic started happening. Uh, from there on, uh, she was looking for a job. Um, she, she got a good resume. She went to Brown University. Couldn't find a job. Eight months. But the, what she was doing, the way she was going about it, was basically just throwing in these blind applications to different jobs, right? Saying, just like Adam said when he sent in the, uh, his original application online to apply, then the computer shot back a, oh, we're sorry, we're moving in a different direction message. She's, she's read hundreds of those. And um, the only, the way that she got her current job, she literally started this week, was because she reached out to her alumni. She found someone in her network. And from there on, they, they were like, hey, perfect. We'd love to work with someone else that's an alumni. We know exactly what you guys were uh, talking about. Come on in. Let's, let's get an interview started. And she, like I said, she started this week. So it's really about work. Like your network is definitely the most important part. You could have the best resume in the world and still just get denied because you don't know anybody there, so. I, really quickly, I agree with both of them. Um, I don't even waste my time I'm applying on Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Glassdoor. That's me personally. You can take what you want with a grain of salt. Um, I won't 
probably ever either. The reason I got my job at Medline is because I reached out to people on LinkedIn. I reached out to 15 different people that worked at Medline until finally one person replied. And it wasn't an, you know, Valpo, Valpo alum. I just, I knew I wanted to work at Medline. And so I reached out to 15 different people and one person replied and that's how I got the interview. Um, so, I mean, again, do what you want, but kind of like what Patrick said, you can apply to all these different places, but at the end of the day, you have to do something that kind of stands out to people. Mm-hmm. So. And all it takes is that one connection, right? Ashley? Mm-hmm. like one out of 15. Right. That's not a pretty yep. good hit ratio, but all it no. takes is one. <laughs> and here you are. Um, yes. The only thing I'll add on this topic before we move on is don't be afraid to ask. Because yeah, if they're a Valpo alum, like, yeah, they're, they're going to love helping you. Or again, if you're part of an organization that they were to like, oh yeah, you're a fellow, whatever it is, like, I'll love to help you, but maybe they're not. And maybe you just found them on LinkedIn or whatever it is. Most companies want to hire good people and they will incentivize their employees to bring people on. So like if I recruit and I bring someone to Applied and I say, hey, you guys should really talk to this person, uh, Jane Smith or John Smith or whatever, and they get hired, I get a little kickback. I get a little bonus on that because I brought a good person to the company and most good companies will encourage that for their current employees. So don't be afraid to ask. In the end, they'll probably get something more than just being nice and helping you. Don't be afraid to ask. Absolutely. I feel like personal connection is huge, especially right now, since everything is over Zoom. (laughs) Um, Okay, so what kind of advice do you wish you were given in your undergrad or even before you got into the industry you're in right now? Honestly, just in general or? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, just in general, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess um, I would say, that I completely lost my train of thought there. Can you uh, repeat the question one more time? (laughs) What kind of advice do you wish you were given in your undergrad before you graduated? Um, Before you, well, before you got into the job that you're in now or even your first position that you were in? Right, perfect. All right, it's back on the tracks. So it's just really not, just don't be afraid to start anything. Don't be afraid to talk to people. For For my position, especially, I'm a, I'm 24 years old. Um, I'm in an industry where we manage people's retirement assets. We manage businesses, um, insurance plans, their 401ks, things like that. So for me, going in, trying to procure a new client, this person might be a 45-year-old husband. He has a family. He's been working his whole life. He has lots of money saved up into his account why should he go with the 24 year old guy fresh out of college, right? That's what you tell yourself. That's what you'd like to tell yourself. But what you don't know is that a lot of the experiences that you've had through Valpo and a lot of the things that you've learned on your internships and just through your network, you guys know, you guys have the skills to help people. And you also know that, okay, if, um, it's gone again. (laughs) <laughs> that's okay it'll come back eventually <laughs> cool I can pick up Patrick and if you remember you can just stop me but Thanks. um you have to be really hungry and again you have to not be um and not that all places could maybe take advantage of you but again you're young so you're not like a, a veteran rep or a veteran employee and just making sure again kind of going back to like knowing your worth but like if you're working hard and you're not getting something that you think that you should be just because of your age, but you're hitting all the numbers that everybody else is hitting, you need to speak up for yourself. And um, I mean, don't speak up for yourself if you're not hitting your stuff. But I mean, if you want to get promoted, I've been, um, I've been working at my company almost three years and I've been promoted four times, but eventually it was hard that first time. They didn't want to promote me because I was right out of school and I asked to be promoted within my first seven months. And they thought, you know, well, this is a two-year role. And I was like, okay, I I didn't say this. Not that I don't care that it's a two-year role, but I've hit every single other target that all these other veteran sales reps are hitting. So just because I'm right out of school, that shouldn't alter me from being promoted. So I kept going and I would go up the chain of command. I'm not saying this always, but it's, 
you, you know, you got to get where you want to be. And you, if you're doing everything right and you're putting your nose, you know, to the grind and you're doing everything that everybody else does, um, you know, it's a dog eat dog eat world. But again, I'm in sales, so I have a different mentality, but um, you have to work hard. And if you're working hard again, don't be afraid, like what Patrick said, to ask questions and to really, again, you, you know, it's your career. It's, you know, you have to defend yourself and you have to be able to, again, just work hard. And if you are doing that, then um, don't be afraid to ask those questions and stand up for yourself if you need to. That's great. And I think the three of us are a little biased because we're all in a way in sales, right? Like we all have to talk to people. We all have to bring solutions to the table. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll take a different approach and stick to the general side of things. Um, and if any of you want to reach out to me, I'm sure uh, the Career Center has all of our contact information. Please reach out to us. Use your alumni network. This is me calling out and challenging you to actually do what we told you to do. Um, and text us, call us, email us, whatever it may be. Um, and happy to talk more on that. But in general, I would say, because I'm again, I'm, I'm 30, right? I have a wife, six years, who I met at Valpo. Um, so talk about using your network, right? Like, my goodness, my wife is my network. Um, we have three wonderful children and we wanna have more kids and things like that. Um, in general advice coming out of college, um, figure out what your value is and your worth. Um, you're worth more than just a dollar amount on a, on a piece of paper. Um, you have an amazing education, but you're more than just the piece of paper that the president is gonna hand you. For me, it was President Heckler. Obviously that's not the case anymore, but like you're more than just that piece of paper. Um, figure out where your heart is and, and you know wrestle with like big picture stuff. Like, um, why are you here? What's your purpose, right? Like for me, that's, that's Jesus. And for you, it might not be that, but like, what are your values as a person? because I knew, um, cause that's gonna figure, that's gonna determine what you're gonna do as a career, right? Like I was working in the car business for five years and I couldn't take the hours anymore because I knew, well, I was married at the time, but like I knew I wanted to start a family. And that was so important to me that I literally left my very well paying job because I knew I needed to spend more time with my family. And guess what? I'm basically making the same amount of money now because I'm really good at what I do. And I'm probably working half the amount of hours. Um, and I get to spend time with my family. So figure out what's your worth, what's your value? What do you really want to do in life, not just your career? Um, and have a career be a piece of that. And I know this is obviously all about careers and things like that. So I'm not trying to take away from that, but know that you are much more than just what you do. Um, and that's some general advice coming out of college, um, because it's always, everyone focuses on, well, I need a job because I have to pay the bills and, you know, I got to buy a house and I got to get a car and whatever it is. Like, why do you want that house? Right? Like, do you want to have a family? Do you want to get married? Like, maybe you should buy a van. I don't know. Right? Like, why do you want to rush into those things? You're going to have, this is going to be probably the biggest moment in your life that you're probably going to have the um, lowest amount of responsibility that you're going to have, let's say, if you want to get married or you want to have kids, or maybe you uh, get promoted quite a few times and, you know, Ashlyn might have people working underneath her now, um, corporately wise. Patrick, you are literally, you have people's hard earned money in your hands, right? You need to invest that wisely because what you do or don't do can affect their retirement, right? So these are big things. And if you don't know yourself or your family or your own values, how can you manage someone else's, whether it be in sales or project management or whatever you're doing, um, make sure you know yourself uh, as well too. All right, so I think oh, you're good. Sorry, you nope, go ahead. Okay, you're fine. Um, so what I was gonna say is, uh, so tomorrow I actually have a meeting in the morning with my boss. Um, and what we're gonna do is we, we have a weekly meeting every Thursday. Um, so what we do during this meeting, it's not, sure, we talk about markets and we talk about you know different individual companies or who's performing well, um, et cetera. But the main point of it, the first thing that he asks us, he's like, 
hey, how are your personal goals going? So beginning of the year, we had to make our own personal goals and we had, he wants us to stick with them because just like Adam's been saying, that's great. How can, how can, how can you expect yourself to do the best job uh, that you can wherever you're working? If you yourself, you're not happy, your personal development, you've kind of, all you're doing now is I'm just working. All I do is I wake up, go to work, come back, eat dinner and go to bed. Uh, you need to develop yourself and have other interests and different hobbies um, that you'd like to like to be interested in and keep doing. Um, and then secondly, um, kind of to touch on what I was saying originally with uh, the example of talking to somebody much older about their retirement account. Sure, it seems really daunting, right? I'm sitting there like I'm 24, they're 45. What what do I think I know over them, right? They've been here forever. They've had a retirement plan longer than I've almost been alive. But what you don't realize, like I said, we have these skills, but that same person, they they want to see that hunger, right? They want they want you to be like, okay, yeah, I can do this. Show confidence in what you're doing, even if you have to fake it, right? Fake it till you make it. That's another another saying that I I've heard a lot of different times. It's just like, hey, I, I'm know what you want to be and do the things that somebody in that position would do, I guess, if that makes any sense. No, absolutely. Until you make it, that's good advice. And it's a lot yeah. easier to do that <laughs> if you is. have a network, right, Patrick? <laughs> but hang out with people that you want to become, right? Like Exactly. It's exactly yeah. right. Kind of going off what Adam was talking about, about like bills and um, things like that, real world things that you don't really learn in college per se. Um, what was the biggest transitional challenge that you faced when transitioning from college to a full-time job? That's a good one. I, I didn't put money in my 401k the first year and how stupid. I mean, just <laughs> dumb because my company matches like 8%, which is incredible. So, um, Hey, are, they, are you hiring by chance? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. But again, you don't, I mean, you don't learn this in school. You don't, you don't learn about like, um, well, how much money should I be putting back into this? And it, you just, you really don't learn that stuff. And, you know, it's kind of sucky because you kind of need that. And so we start putting in your 401k right away. I just wanted more money to go and kind of do whatever with. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have had so much more money if I started putting away in my 401k right away and just learning about the different benefit plans. You know what I mean? Like I didn't really ask those questions. Like when you get out of school, you can stay on your parents' insurance, but I just mm -hmm. recently got married. So I had to get off and get on my own. Mm -hmm. And for those first few months, I didn't really ask all those questions about like different packages that they have for your dental and your medical. So just, it's, and again, it goes all the way back to just don't be afraid to call your HR and to really ask those questions because you don't know what you don't know. They don't, there's not like a plan when we're in school that tells you exactly, you know, what tier do I register for, for my, you know, for my, for my health insurance and all these different things. So ask them, be, be the annoying person who asks, you know, 20 different questions until you figure it out. I don't know if that makes you annoying. That's what HR, HR loves that. That's why I can't work in HR. Like I can't stand that. <laughs> um, I, I touched on it earlier. You're so coming out of school, you're going to be making more money likely than you ever have. You want to be wise with that. You want to connect with someone like a Patrick shoot. Maybe you want to call Patrick. Like I'm not, you know, pushing him, but like be smart with your money as soon as possible. Ignorance is not a bad thing. I'll say that again. Ignorance does not mean you're dumb. It just means you don't know what you don't know. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know anything about medical sales. I know a lot about sales and I know a lot about assets under management and financial uh, prospects and compound interest and things like that. But I'm ignorant in a lot of different things. And I admit that. Totally be okay with that. Ignorance is not a bad thing. Um, but the sooner you can prepare yourself and you don't have to know everything. But the sooner you can prepare yourself, and if you know yourself, and I, I said this earlier, if you know your value and you know your plans, like you might not have it set in stone, by golly, um, but you might know like, okay, I do want to get married. Congratulations, Ashlyn. Um, 
maybe you do want to have kids and start a family, or maybe you want to adopt. I keep saying kids, like those are, I'm biased, right? Like um, maybe you don't want to have kids. Maybe you don't want to get married. Maybe you want to travel, like just know what your goals are, or at least have a pretty darn good idea. Um, and then wrap your arms around that so that you can say, okay, um, this career path is going to help me accomplish these goals, or I really want to get into medical sales and I'm going to do everything I can to get there, whether that's reaching out to 15 people on LinkedIn, or uh, I want to get to a million dollars assets under management and I'm going to knock on doors and go through shoes until my feet are blown out, right? Like um, have a goal and go get it. Um, that's going to help you. Yeah, so I, there's not much to add to that really, but um, like you said, have a goal and go for it. And also just to kind of build on the know yourself, right? If you need help with something, there's somebody out there that's going to be able to help you, right? So if you're, you're, for me, even just when I went through and I was trying to decide, okay, what should I do after college? How should I figure out what my job should be? I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm good at numbers. I don't necessarily love them, but I'm good at numbers, but I like talking to people too. And then from there, I was kind of like, okay, where could I go from here? And then I, I kind of used my interests to find that intersection. And I was like, okay, listen, I can, I can help people with their investments, you know, because people, there's a lot of different things in the financial industry. People don't understand whether it's insurance, investments, 401ks, et cetera. Um, so just, knowing yourself and knowing, Hey, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really understand that. Um, Hey, could you help me out with that? Hey, Pat, do you, do you know anything about a 401? How much could I contribute to my 401k? What's the most I could contribute, et cetera. Just different questions like that. Um, people are told people are willing to help. So um, just know yourself, what you're good at and focus on those. Awesome. It looks like we have about five minutes left. So do you guys have any final advice or last words of wisdom that you want to give everybody? I guess I would say um, whatever you like doing the most, keep with it. It may not even be your, your career. So I was a baseball player at Valpo. So I obviously have a passion for the sport, but in my industry, I don't necessarily do baseball all, all day. I work with different people and families, helping them plan for savings, but I know it's an interest of mine. And so from there, I was like, you know, I can get into coaching. So just because you have one job, one career, that doesn't, that doesn't have to be where you stop. Um, Go out and find something else that you're interested in, that you're passionate about, a cause, and go help out with it. Um, I I get I get paid for my job just coaching, and it's a I can tell you it's a great boost. But I I don't even think about it. I wouldn't even do it for the money, right? Um, so just having those things that you like to do, and don't forget them. Stick stick true to your roots and continue doing what you enjoy, even though it may not be your nine to five. I think to, to an extent, it does matter if you're good at something or not. Like I had a friend who she really wanted to get into sales only because of the money. She's not a salesperson, like love her to death, but she's not, she doesn't have it in her. She can't sell you something. Like she feels bad. You know, she can't push you. She's not a pusher. I mean, you, to an extent, it like, it, it's not all about the money, but um, you, you know, you have, same with like, you know, baseball, softball. I mean, you're not going to play if you're sitting on the bench. I mean, probably not. You'd like to think no. So, I mean, you, to an extent, you, you know, you're not going to have fun in your job if you're not that good at it either. So make sure to, like I use the sales example, but if you're not, you know, if you don't really like to push people and, you know, you you love like pushing back on them until they agree with what you're selling, then maybe sales isn't for you. Um, and again, it's not all about the money, you know, like my sister wants to be a teacher, but she's so worried about the money, but she loves teaching. I mean, so, you know, do what you love, do what you're good at and the money, it will come, you know, it, it kind of, I think Patrick and Adam have both mentioned this, that money isn't everything, but it will come and also kind of have a plan at the same time. Like, 
I'm now a manager. Um, I have six reps that work under me and I've only been out of school, not even three years. So again, go, go after what you want. And, you know, you don't need years and years of experience to, to get to the next level. If again, you're speaking up and you're asking for what you deserve, obviously you have to hit your metrics and you, um, you have to do what you're supposed to do, but you know what I mean? Your voice matters. So speak up again, like I've been saying this whole time, if you are doing what you're doing to get to where you want to be, nobody's going to hire you or prom promote you if they don't know that you want it one and two, if you're obviously not doing a very good job. So. Man, that's some good stuff. Um, and here you thought we were just going to talk about career stuff, right? This is deep stuff, right? Like some of you probably haven't even thought about this kind of stuff before. Some of you might be like a freshman and you're like, dude, I'm not graduating for like three, four years more. And I'm doing law after that. Like, okay, that's cool. Um, what I would encourage for those of you that aren't necessarily on the like brink of graduation that are still in school and you're being proactive and taking initiative because you're watching this or maybe the recording, which is awesome. Keep going on that. But enjoy the time you have in school as much as possible. Now, I'm not saying go party every day and just fail out. Like you obviously need to do your job and learn, but enjoy it as much as possible because the real world isn't scary or anything like that, but it's very different. And there's never going to be another time to, let's say, study abroad. I was in Germany for an entire, actually six months, because I did an internship in Germany, thanks to a professor connection. The following summer, I was in Hong Kong on the other side of the world for an internship, thanks to a professor. Um, enjoy your time while you're in school, because there will never be another time. I have a wife and three kids. You think I could study abroad for six months? anytime in my near future, never again will I have another opportunity to do something like that. There's a reason why you're at Valpo. There's a reason why you're in school. Take advantage of it as much as possible. And that doesn't mean just go party and things like that. Like there's a time and a place for that to enjoy those kinds of activities, but um, make the most of what you have while you're in school. Now, if you are at the brink of graduation and you're like, oh, I gotta get a job. Like, yes, you should probably get something to provide some income. Um, but there's a plethora of opportunity out there and most of which you're just ignorant on. You just don't know what you don't know and be open to opportunities um, unless you have a set goal of like, look, I really wanna get into medical sales. That's awesome. You can work for Medline, you can work for Striker, you can work for A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? Like there are a plethora of opportunities Go to your career center, go to your network of alumni, your LinkedIn network, people you know on Facebook, whoever it is, and know that there is opportunity out there and you can get it. One last thing I'd just like to uh, leave everyone on. Um, it's something, it's like a, uh, a matrice that um, one, of my, one of my bosses showed me one time. So the matrix goes like this, okay? And if you're unsure of your career, you don't know what you're gonna do yet, you still have no idea, this is something that helped me out, okay? So the way that it works, you got a box, okay? The very top, this column, the left column is what you like, okay? The right column is what you don't like, okay? On the left side, we have what, you, what you're good at and what you're not good at, okay? So you could like something and still not be good at it, right? That's okay. You can get better at that. That's something that you like to do, right? On the opposite side, there's something that you're good at. You may not like to do very much. It's okay to be in that box as well. You just have to find different opportunities to go do something else. The only box that you need to stay away from is the things that you don't like and that you aren't good at. Those things will never bring you success, okay? But if you can find something ideally in that, that first box of the things you like and that you're good at, uh, that's, that's the sweet spot. That's when you start cooking with gasoline. Um, but the other two, those can just, you, you can make this your side hustle and the other two are your day jobs. It doesn't have to be an absolute one way or the other. It doesn't have to be perfect that way. But as long as we've been talking, as long as we're working towards something like we've been talking about all night, that's really what's important.
That's great. It's great to end on. I'd like no, to I thank the three of you on behalf of the Career Center and, and the university in general, and Anna, you too, of course, for moderating this. I thought it was really uh, helpful and insightful. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time from your busy schedules 